Hello and welcome to Let's Talk with Bishop R.C. Blakes. R.C. is an author, empowerment teacher, and the proud pastor of the New Home Ministries of New Orleans, Louisiana, and Houston, Texas. His message circles the globe. His conversational and candid approach to challenging content makes him a relevant voice to all generations. Get ready for a life changing transformational conversation. Good morning, family. Good morning, good morning, good morning, or good afternoon or good evening, depending on what part of the world you're living in. I want to talk about something today that is sobering, but necessary. Uh, I don't know about you, but as I look at the world, my heart breaks uh, when I see how, you know, in my own city, where murder is just running rampant, men murdering women. When I, when I look at um, the crisis at the border where so many people are dying, just trying to get to better opportunities. When I look at the international scene and I look at the wars and the rumors of wars and I and when I look at how citizens of certain countries are being used as pawns between politicians, when we see the gas crisis, when we see the uh, travesty that we call politics in the United States of America, when we see so much poverty in the wealthiest land on the planet, it makes my heart break. And when we look at the crisis, the financial crisis, and the pandemic, and the pandemics to come, I was just listening to the news, and they were talking about vaccinations for monkeypox now. And it's like we're out of one thing into another. In fact, we're out of one thing into another before the last thing even comes to an end. And you and I are living in these times. And we are, many of us are, the sons and daughters of God. We are saved, in other words. How do we survive these times? Somebody said, oh, well, you know, you just got to have faith. You, you had better have faith. In fact, about it, I don't know how a person could live in this life or in this world without a firm and solid foundation of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know how a person could uh, possibly be an atheist and survive mentally. I think we have to believe that there's one bigger than us and one that is um, sovereign, that is overseeing all of these affairs for us to even wake up in the morning. What would it be like if you had to wake up and you woke up to the idea that there is no God. One of the things that keeps me motivated and keeps me moving is that I believe that all things are working together for my good. And for 57, going on 58 years now, I've seen what looked like it was the end of me actually be the launching pad for the best of me. But how do we survive these times? If you go to 1 Chronicles, chapter 12, in verse 32, it says, And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. They had the anointing, the prophetic grace to discern the times and to know what to do. I think the world is searching for the spirit of Issachar in the church. In fact, about it, believers are searching for the spirit of Issachar, how do we survive these times? 
And let me just drop this peg while I'm here. Those of you who are leaders of churches, if you've returned back into these buildings with religion as usual and you're just telling the Bible story and you're, you're singing your song, doing your poem and you're hooping and hollering at the end and that's all there is to it and you have no real prophetic insight, you have no instruction for the people of God as it relates to how to live in these times when people are collapsing mentally, there's no word in your pulpit relative to how to heal emotionally, how to reconnect to God, I'm afraid that you may have seen the best of your days because the world needs now the spirit of Issachar to rest upon the men and women of God. And as I've been pondering this and praying about this, just looking at the times, you know, not, uh, you know, everything now is um, unpredictable. And when times get unpredictable, all over the world, things are unpredictable. When times get unpredictable, we must turn our ears to heaven because God always has an instruction. And as I was listening to the Holy Spirit, the first thing he said to me, and this is not a sermon or a lesson, I'm just, you know, just sharing with you, revisiting what the Holy Spirit was speaking into my heart over the last few weeks, actually. And the first instruction to the people of God is sanctification. Sanctification. And when I, when I say sanctification, sanctification speaks of separating yourself from the depraved culture. I'm afraid that we have become so inundated with the culture that the culture is seeping into the ship of our lives. You see, the ship is fine as long as the ship is in the water. It doesn't matter how turbulent the waters are. But when the waters start getting into the ship, the ship is then in trouble. And I'm afraid that many of us as believers, we have turned our faces away from sanctification, separating ourselves unto the holy things of God, and we have become so much like the world that there's no difference between us and the world. We have to, we have to separate ourselves from this depraved culture. We can't compromise this. I know for a lot of you, you have family members, you have friends, you have all kinds of people that are wholly given to the, the culture of the day and you don't want to rock the boat. Maybe you're afraid you're going to lose your relationship. Well, you're not going to lose your relationship, especially with a loved one, but your fellowship may be challenged. The, 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 the prodigal son's father released him he never lost his relationship with his son, but he released the fellowship because he realized that his son had gone to a place that only God could rescue him from. And it was because he released him and he allowed the separation to happen. He sanctified himself from the buffoonery and the foolishness of his child, that his child was able to come to himself. There are many of us who are in this season where we're just compromising with the world and we're compromising with sin. And the thing you have to understand is when judgment strikes the earth, the only hope for God's people is distinction. I, I can't let, I don't cherish any relationship with anybody to the point that my trying to hold on to you is going to separate me from God. Because, you know, when, when the, the death angel came into Egypt, the only thing that separated the children of God from being destroyed by the death angel was that they were behind the door where the blood of the lamb was marked on the door. They were behind the blood. They were separate and sanctified. 
if we don't return our hearts back to a place of sanctification, my brothers and sisters, I'm afraid that we will be consumed with the same judgment that is upon the earth. And I know you have prophets that tell you, well, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. Bay, let me tell you something. It's not going to get better. You know, you, you, you have little seasons where it looks like things are improving in this area, but that's just for a moment. This thing is going to get increasingly worse. And the only saving grace you and I have is that we might be sanctified or distinct, that there's a distinction between what is holy and what is not. And I like what 2 Corinthians 6 and 17 says. He says, wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Meaning if you intermingle and you don't draw a line of separation between you and this depraved culture, the world might embrace you, but God will reject you. If you're going to survive this, you're going to have to return to a place of sanctification. Listen to what the writer says in Romans 13, verses 11 through 14. He says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. If there ever were a time for you to get your life together, it's now. And if you're going to, if we're going to sanctify without, you know, spending another hour talking about him, this is going to involve a deep relationship with the Holy Spirit. You're going to have to embrace the Holy Spirit, be filled with the Holy Spirit, walk in the Spirit, live in the Spirit. It's the only way. It's the only true, he's the only true way to sanctify. Number two, second instruction the Spirit of God gave me for these times and how we might, how we will, how we may survive these times. The, the, the words that the Spirit of God gave me were moderation and conservation. Moderation and conservation. When, when difficult times hit the world, God's people are supposed to cut back on fleshly gratifications. And we must learn to live on less with fewer conveniences. This is not a time to go wild buying everything you see in the mall and trying to keep up with the Joneses. This is not a time. These are very unpredictable economic times. I don't know how unpredictable it is now. I think it's very clear. And some of us are watching the news. We're going to the gas pump. We're realizing that we're spending more in the grocery stores. And we're still out here just spending on stuff that does not matter. I was getting ready to buy my wife something uh, just recently just because I love her and I appreciate her and I actually can't afford to buy it. And then I sat and I thought about it, the times that we are in. And I thought about how it would be nice for me to buy this for my wife, but this is not something my wife needs. I thought about how I'm the father of four, the grandfather of three. I thought about how I have a, a mother that's in her 80s. I thought about how I'm, how I'm the pastor of, you know, a lot of uh, people who are not as well-to-do. Some are poor. And the Lord said, not now. 
This is the time for moderation, conservation, because you never know when these resources that you might have allocated for this wonderful gift for your wife might be needed to uh, preserve your children, might be needed to preserve you and your wife, might be needed to preserve your mother, your, your members. Because this is a time not to go wild spending on everything you see that you want and desire. This is a time that you have to talk to yourself, even if you can't afford it. Times are moving so swiftly and things are changing so drastically that you may be able to afford it today and tomorrow you may be in need. So we have to, you know, I was thinking about this here. We have to flip the word store. You know, when you look at the word store, it, it, it can mean one thing on one, in, in one person's mindset and in another person's mindset, it can mean the polar opposite. For most people, when you think about store, it's where you go to give your money away for people's goods. But there are some people who are kingdom conscious and abundance conscious. When they think about store, they're not thinking about spending. They're thinking about storing up. One store speaks of relieving you of your resources. The other store speaks of retaining those resources. And the Spirit of God said, moderation, teach the people moderation and conservation. And the Bible says in Proverbs 10, 4 and 5, he becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. He that gathereth in the sum, summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. Now this is the counsel of Joseph. God never sends famine without first revealing it to his people. In Amos 3 and 7, it says, Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets, those that can hear his voice. And so the word is, the words are moderation, conservation. Doesn't mean that you stop living your life, but moderation. Come on now. Moderation, conservation. Number three, third word I heard in this instruction, and I only have four, is collectivism. Collectivism. There are times that we can't get by on our own. We have to collectively work together because life is a team sport. I know you thought it was an individual sport. The reality is none of us make it through life by ourselves. And there are seasons like the one we're in now that you can't survive it without the participation of others. Collectivism, it's where it's where you and I join together and we join with them and all of us working together, bringing different gifts, different talents, different abilities, different resources, and we pool our resources and we work together to make certain that we are collectively good. This means to have, this means to have a mindset Watch this. And an, and an understanding that we're not in competition with each other. And if all of us are not good, none of us are good. This is where we have to do more than sit in these churches and, and pretend like we are a family. This is where we have to actually be a family. This is why we have to function in moderation and in conservation because there are, there, are, there are resources that I will have and you will have that will literally save another's life. But if we're not collective in our thinking and if, 
everything we think about is just me, my, and mine, us four, and no more. We're going to perish. We're going to perish. If we don't work together in this time, we're going to perish. I was listening to a, a wise young woman talk about how people come from other countries, other cultures into the United States of America and they learn how to live in the same house and pool all of their resources and they break their, their living expenses down to f just fractions of what it would be and they work together and the whole family becomes multimillionaires. While in this country we have a mindset, I want to be king of the hill, I want to bigger this than you, and I want to better that, better that than you, and we never learn to work together. If you go to Acts chapter 2, verses 44 and 45, it says, And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And nobody made them do, do this. This is what they willingly did. They work together, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not suggesting that we come and all put all our resources into one pool. Of course, I'm not suggesting that, but the principle is that they were collective. They worked together. They were concerned about one another. Uh, I, one was inconvenienced for the preservation of another because we can always make it if we stay together. Now, this is a foreign concept to most of our churches, to most of our families. We have not learned to work together. But listen to what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 11. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? We got to work together. You know, people all over the country um, are amazed that New Home Church, New Home Ministries, how... Um, you know, we, we had such an amazing patriarch, my late father, Prophet Robert Charles Blake Sr., for 50 years. We had him as a leader. And then my brother and I had to step into those shoes to lead the ministry, and we made a decision from day one that we were going to work together. Now, there, had peop there were people who had rumors out Less than 48 hours after my father died, they said, well, R.C. Blakes, he's going to take this, this, and that, and Samuel Blakes, he's going to take that, that, and that, and they're going to go their separate ways. That ain't going to last. It's going to be a power struggle. My brother and I have never had a power struggle. I'm my brother's greatest fan. My brother's my greatest fan. We were trained to work together collectively. And, and because of it, New Home Ministries is constantly soared because we work together. During a pandemic, we, we got on the phone right before all of this stuff shut down. We got on the phone and we discussed what should we do. And we both said, we hear God saying, close the doors. And we shut the doors of the church. And we went on the cyber platforms and new home ministries, even out of the building, kept climbing. Now, when other ministries and churches are struggling to come back and trying to figure out where their members are, we have come back and we've reconvened, and, and the ministry is constantly doing that. Why? Because we work together. When you see New Home Ministries, you see a team. You see a well-oiled machine from the head all the way down to the bottom. 
you see a collective team because if we stay together, if we stay together, we can always make it. It's when we are separate, the enemy divides us, that we lose our strength. But if we're together, when I'm cold, you're warm. And when you're cold, I'm warm. When you don't have anything, I got something. And the Lord said, teach the people that these are times that they're going to have to become collective. Now watch this. Number four, and finally, I heard the Spirit of God said, teach the people of God to advance. In this time, when the world's when the world systems are failing, it's not a time for the believers to fret. This is the time that the kingdom advances. God said, don't sit around watching the news all day, looking at what's going under, what company's going under, how many people losing their houses, and all of this kind of stuff. The Lord said, start hearing me and believing me for strategies. Start listening to smart, prophetic people that have strategies relative to how to take advantage because when the whole world is operating in fear, there are few prophetic wise people that are operating in wisdom and, and are making strategic moves and advancing because the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. The just take it, may take advantage of that wealth when the world is distracted by, you know, terror and pain and, and, and pandemic. It's then that the Lord says we are to advance. In Genesis chapter 26, verses 12 through 14, it says, Then Isaac sold in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks and possession of herb, herds and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. He was in a land and in a place that was working against him. But he became very great. And the Lord said, the seeds that you sow. And I'm not talking about an offering now. I'm talking about uh, I'm talking about business plans and strategies. The Lord said, don't be afraid to take certain, make certain moves in this season. Certain opportunities are going to be left on the table because people are going to get afraid and they're going to run away from stuff and it's just going to be sitting there waiting on you to take advantage of it. The Lord said, have a mind to advance. Take care of business. And God said, it is in this season, in this season, the Lord said, that you will set it, set it up for even generations to come. But these are some of the things that we must prophetically consider. I hope you got something out of this. Now today, if you're there and you're saying, well, pastor, I need to give my heart to the Lord. This is certainly the, the time to do it. Get your life right with God. There's an email address at the bottom of the screen. If you email us, someone's going to respond to you and lead you through the scriptures and pray with you. And I'd love to welcome you into the family of God and hopefully into the new home family. Now today, as we prepare to honor God in our giving and with the tithe, I want you to separate the Lord's tithe and return the Lord's tithe now, utilizing all of the, or any of the apps that are on the screen or in the description, the links. But I'm asking every person today that will sow a hundred and twenty-six dollar seed. I'm asking you to sow that today. A hundred and twenty-six dollar seed. Those of you that God has made able and you're willing, I want you to sow that for the preservation of your legacy. Sow it today. And those of you who say, well, pastor, I, I, don't, I can't afford that. I don't have that. I want you to sow the forty-two dollar seed that is our corporate seed. 
want you to sow into the ministry today. Sow into New Home Ministries today. Utilizing the apps, mailing it if you need, or you know, looking at the apps on the screen, or going into the into the description. But I love you. I want you to continue to sow, continue to tithe. And remember this, you're on top and you're going higher. God has more in store for you. God bless you. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Family, didn't we enjoy that word from our bishop, R.C. Blakes Jr. I know, I know that it touched your life. And listen, what we want to do right now is to make sure that we sow seed in good ground and our bishop is good ground let's start by sowing into his cash app as a matter of fact you can take your phone out right now and scan that qr code that's right on the screen but if not you can go to cash app and put in dollar sign robert blakes jr you can give at venmo at rc blakes or his personal website at rcblakes.com or through the Givelify app. Sow seed and be blessed. We here at RC Blakes Ministries want to thank you for spending this time with us today. RC and Lisa are always honored to have you with us. Don't forget to reach out to us by visiting our website at www.rcblakes.com. While you're there, you may join our mailing list and receive a free download of The Laws of Manifesting Your Vision by R.C. Blakes. Also look at all of the online programs by R.C. You may find all books written by R.C. and Lisa. Once again, all of us here at R.C. Blakes Ministries want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And as we always say, see you at the top.